On today's show, the Queen's Wrath is now live. Get new bounties and get ready for new missions. The Trials of Osiris, it's a secret PvP playlist that's been revealed, and more of the tower is unlocking soon. All that and more on today's Destiny the Show. You're listening to Destiny the Show. Welcome, Guardian. Welcome, everybody. It is September 23rd. This is show number 11. We are two weeks into Destiny. Joining me as usual, Diddy, how are you today? Pretty good. School is starting to ramp up. Have a first few tests coming up, so that's exciting. Midterms yet or not quite? Not quite. Midterms will be around October-ish, end of October. Isn't it like six weeks? I remember some of my classes, college does this weird thing where you can almost have two rounds of midterms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The way that my college handles it is just like it does the first round of tests and then the tests right before the holidays and then the finals. Yeah. Are these like a triple test class? Are these like... Yeah. Okay. So you got three chances. Well, yeah. (laughs) Basically. I hate it when it stacks up like that, don't you? It's like... The weight of the world is on your shoulders. Yeah, and then having multiple classes, so it's just like if you have two or three tests in the same day, that's like, uh, torture. And you can't change it unless it's finals. Like, the way it was at my school was if you had more than two finals on the same day, you could switch it to another day. But that was it. They don't care about the regular semester. Oh, midterms? You got four today? <laughs> have fun, kid. Good luck. Yeah, you know? it depends on the professor. Usually you can ask them, and usually they can reschedule, but yeah. they would want you to take it earlier, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's like, well, you can come in a week early. You're like, no, nah, that means I missed the <laughs> review day. And it's like, well, it's a trade-off. Yeah. What have you been playing other than Destiny? Because I know you've been playing Destiny this week. Uh, a little bit of League of Legends still. Nice. Get, getting my competitive fix in. How is gold? Gold is hard. Yeah. You know, I'm gold four now, and gold is the same as silver, except people think that they are awesome at this game. (laughs) So their decision making is really bad. And I bet they run their mouth in chat constantly. Yeah. So as soon as I start, I mute everybody. Yeah, you kind of got to do that. I heard that as the pro tip to work your way up. So it's the it's the only way. I don't care. No exceptions. Just mute everybody. You get halfway through the game, you start believing them. You're like, maybe I did. No, no, don't listen to them. They're wrong. I played a game (laughs) yesterday. You should have seen the gold graph. We were losing the entire time. Yes. And then the last team fight, I was playing Azir, the new champion. Mm -hmm. They were at Baron. I teleported in. I ulted everybody. My team followed up. We aced them and won. Oh, my gosh. Right off the, the Baron kill? Yeah, we were like... 12,000 gold behind and we won just off of that one team fight it was awesome it's like one of my favorite parts is if like you can play enough to not give up you know i get discouraged if i'm not playing regularly but like if you get to that mindset of never give up there are some ridiculous comebacks that you can have in that game you know what i'm saying like especially in any division that's not like diamond you yep. know <laughs> yep inhibs down in your base people are discouraged you're like jungle is just throwing the game as he's trying to backdoor and then somehow you win like a team fight push down lane and win and it's like yes exactly throws always happen never give up exactly i played a little bit of hearthstone this week but by a little i mean like less than an hour i really just played quite a bit of destiny and we've got a lot of news to talk about today so let's get into that Patch 1.0.1.4, that's a lot of dots, is now out. And it brought a few things to the table. We'll talk about it here. It's not quite as long as our last patch, was it, Diddy? No, it's this one's straightforward. Yep. Short and sweet, the latest patch for Destiny reduces the difficulty of a number of activities as well as fixes issues when completing the Vault of Glass. So in regards to the missions, for the Shrine of Oryx... It reduced the difficulty by removing majors from heroic tiers. It did this for the Sword of Crota and Exclusion Zone. So they removed majors and heroic tiers. Uh, or from heroic tiers, excuse me. And majors are the yellow bar enemies, correct? Yes. Okay. And I don't know why they did this. Someone had the theory that they were doing this to remove checkpoint farming. Because a lot of times, once you kill a major, that 
triggers the checkpoint in the level so that if you die, it then progresses from that point forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know specifically on the moon, the uh, Temple of Crota, yeah. you would leave the majors alive so that they could kill you so that it would just respawn you right there. So you would keep farming the, the thralls and the acolytes as they came through that door. Yeah, but, but it's it, just heroic tier, though, because you could do the moon farming thing, the level 8 version. Well, the level 9, I think that's still considered heroic. It's like a heroic modifier, meaning that more enemies spawn. Huh. I'm not 100% sure on that. That could be total BS. Doesn't matter. It's kind of a confusing... I don't I don't know why they reduce the difficulty, but I'm sure they have their reasons there. So. Yep. And then regarding the Vault of Glass raid, they... Uh, noted that dropping the relic at the end of the raid will no longer result in a team wipe. This will prevent players from being stuck at a black screen after the raid. That sounds pretty awful. You will also remain dead if you were dead when the mission ended. That will be addressed by a future patch. So, again, that's it. That's patch 1.0.1.4. Kind of confusing uh, for me because a lot of these changes don't affect me directly, but I'm sure they have their reasons for why they're doing this, if that makes sense, so... Thoughts? No thoughts. I haven't played the raid yet, and I probably won't until, like, December when I get an Xbox One in Destiny, so... What level are you? I'm level 24. I just nice. hit 24, so... I, Dude. Even if I had the Vault of Glass available, I wouldn't be able to do it. You and I, neck and neck, man. I hit 24 last night, too. Nice. Full-time student with a job, and I'm a full-time job, so we're sticking <laughs> neck and neck, which is good. It's still... It makes me really confused as to how, like... Wednesday night, when I started playing the game, there's, like, people on my friends list who are 25 and 26. I'm like, how did they do this? <laughs> like, have you slept? Have yeah. you eaten? They just, they just get lucky with their loot drops. That's pretty much what it is post-20. They knew about Loot Cave before anybody, yo. Oh, yeah. uh, listeners, by the way, I want to say thank you. Uh, the last two week shows, we have hit over 2,000 listeners across our platforms. The iTunes, like, crowd is carrying the ball. We really appreciate it, and we're growing continually, and that's something that we're really thankful for because it means we're going to get to be able to do some pretty cool things coming up in the future. Diddy and I have talked about some guests and people that we'd like to have on, some people we would love to interview, and by the growth of the show and seeing the reception, you guys are enabling us to do more. Now, granted, we're not full-time podcasters or YouTubers, and we don't earn revenue from this, but... It is enabling the quality of the show to improve because there's more of you lovely people listening. So there's my thank you and shout out to all of you guys. Now, that's the only one you get. You get no more. (laughs) All right. Queen's Wrath is live. New bounties, new enemies to kill, and new missions. Not really because you can't really access the new missions until the DLC comes out. So did you want to tell us a little bit about the Queen's Wrath? Yeah, so this is this was confusing for me at first, and I had recorded some gameplay of it, but... Mm -hmm. And when I watched it back, I'm like, this is boring, and I actually understand it now, so I'm going to re-record. Mm. Um, but basically, there is a new area open in the tower. It's If you played the beta, it's where the Iron Banner event happened, up the stairs and behind that door. And uh, the Queen's Wrath gives you, I think, f- six bounties available. Yes. And the vendor is the one behind the Iron Banner, but... In order to get these bounties, you go to the regular bounty tracker, and then you can access up to five of them, obviously. And it's basically a regular bounty, but you earn Queen's Reputation from it. And then from that Queen's Reputation, you will increase your Queen's rank, and then once you hit level one in Queen's rank, you can buy stuff from the vendor. And the vendor has some really cool things. And what I, I mentioned to you, because you and I both were playing this this morning. We got up early. We wanted to do some bounties. I got three done uh, for her. There are five crucible bounties. There are four patrol bounties. There are three strike bounties. There are then two story uh, bounties. And I did one of those um, where you defeat Draxus, which mm-hmm. is the big guy in the Winter Kel mission on Venus. Great mission, by the way. Uh, and then you have three bounties for... The DLC that's unreleased yet. Three for the Dark Below and three for the House of Wolves. So some of these you're going to have to wait until it actually comes out. But the gear, um, which is sold, if you're wondering where the gear is sold, I was looking this morning, uh, and you didn't play the beta, you don't know where Iron Banner is. 
where the normal bounty tracker is, just keep going behind him. It's a new area, and it really looks like there's more to the tower. Some more of the towers unlocked, basically, but doesn't it look, Diddy, like they've planned out more space for vendors in that zone, like that new open area? Yes, absolutely. There's a few doors in there that yep. have yet to be open. Yeah, it's exciting. It's nice to see something new. I don't think people are making a big enough deal. Finally, the gear. It's for Glimmer. So once you achieve this rank, you can buy gear with Glimmer. There were three weapons. There was a bond for the Warlock, which I'm sure means there's the two things. There's one for a Titan, and there's... You guys have capes for yeah, hunters? Yeah, there is a hunter, one hunter cape available, and it looks pretty sweet. Titans get a little dress thing. I don't know what that's called, even though I played a Titan in the beta. Ass and, cape. Yeah little an ass cape yeah that's a good way to put it <laughs> i think i i think i picked that up from the guardians of radio podcast <laughs> nice nice um guardian radio whatever gosh you gotta shout out people right man you can have somebody to call <laughs> um two icons and shaders so that's all that's available right now no no real new armor but like armor with stats but it's pretty cool i, I also want to mention there's a little bit extra to the bounties. So the Queen's Wrath is not just Queen's bounties. Once you complete a bounty from the Queen, it unlocks a Queen's Wrath mission modifier. So um, when you go to orbit and you want to select the destination on the left side, you see those daily, weekly, and featured playlists right there on the left. On the very top is the Queen's Wrath icon. You select that, and you queue up, and it'll give you a story mission with specific modifiers at level 24. And once you complete that level 24 story mission, you will get legendary... You can get legendary armor and weapons and stuff like that. So it's not just bounties. You actually have to complete the bounty to get like a mission ticket to do the Queen's Wrath mission, so... And once the DLC is unlocked, there will be six new story missions for Queen's Wrath, but that's not coming for a while now. For the time being, some of the weapons look great. A few of the pieces of armor that I've gotten to see, like the chest piece for Titan, looks really cool. It's all got that purple theme that the Queen, oh, yeah. you know. I love the loves. fact that they're all purple. It looks really cool. That's a portion of the story I want to see more of. Do you remember, like, in the pre-beta stuff, we were seeing trailers of that the her brother basically talking with guardians and like shooting a a hand cannon yeah so i'm not sure if that got cut or if that was just might be dlc stuff that they're waiting to push into the game so get out there guys try out queen's wrath it's gonna be a fun event i mean it's it's not overwhelming but it's not underwhelming too it's more content new areas coming unlocked and just stuff to do which is what i like so Next up is Trials of Osiris, which is a secret PvP playlist that was discovered, I think, yesterday or the day before. So the way this works is if you're a Crucible player, you're playing Crucible, and you win at minimum 25 games in a, the same game mode. doesn't have to be in a row, but you need to be like, if I'm going to be doing the free-for-all playlist as a Crucible player, and I win 25 times, I have thus entered my Guardian, basically, Uh, to have the chance of getting what's called a tournament ticket. A tournament ticket is given to players who excel at a certain game type in the Crucible playlist. So once you get a tournament ticket, it's an invitation to go to a special PvP playlist called the Trials of Osiris. This takes place on Mercury, and currently I think it's the only way to play on Mercury. Is that right, Diddy? Yeah, I think so. And it's a 3v3 playlist. If you lose three times, you're out. You can continue competing in the Trials of Osiris playlist until you lose three times. Once you are out, you've lost three times, you then have to earn another tournament ticket to regain access. I think this is so stinking cool, don't you, Diddy? Yeah, this is like the best of the best. This is basically Destiny's MLG playlist. And the fact that it's locked and it's kind of secret... To most people, that's really cool. Like, it gives it exclusivity, and it gives it desire. Yep. I don't know if there's specific rewards that come along with it. This is all brand spanking new. Uh, But it's just cool to see that there's a lot that people have still yet to discover. We sort of, launch week came out, you had the sea of sort of negative reviews, sort of mixed reviews. And it's hard to judge a game like Destiny with just 20 hours or 40 hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's really all about the end game content and the longevity of the game. You know, we all had our initial impressions and 
they've obviously changed since then. Some of them might not have, but ours definitely have improved. Yeah, I would agree with that wholly. And that's what we're going to talk about in our topic today is just impressions after two weeks. Because I know it's basically all I'm playing right now. And I'm having a good time. I'm finding different ways to have good times, but uh, we can talk about that more in the topic. Uh, Anyway, Trials of Osiris, there's a link in our show notes. You should check it out. If anybody does get into it, we would love it if you would send us a picture. You can tweet that to us because it'd be cool to see which one of our uh, listeners is super elite. And I don't know, it just would be nice to see some of uh, that footage. I'm sure YouTubers are going wild looking for that today. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm surprised it's still very high on the Twitch viewer count. Like, I would have thought it dropped off the the face of the map as soon as Vault of Glass is finished. Yeah, it's still top 10. Yep. And some days, like, especially when new events are coming out, that that's what's nice. It gets that boost. When a new raid comes out or a new DLC comes out, you're going to see it getting that nice push because it's a game that's we're hopeful to see a lot of support for, and I, I think we're going to. Public events have been made more frequent through a hot fix. That's your story. <laughs> just, to, just to branch off this, there's a couple users who have made web applications to... Um, time the public events so you can actually set Mm. your watch to them so it'll tell you in five minutes on earth in the cosmodrome there's going to be a devil walker spawning and a public event happening right here and it'll give you the countdown timers and you can actually set your watch to it so that's really cool it'll really help you um grind those vanguard marks a little bit quicker yep if you need some farming stuff that is rad i didn't know that users are too cool that link will be available in the show notes Weapon stats in depth. Diddy sent me this article, and now he's going to explain it. (laughs) So there are two separate links for this in the show notes. The first one is just weapon stats. Basically, what does the different damage do? What does the different, like, charge rate, impact, rate of fire, range, stability, reload, what does all of that mean, Um, and how does that affect different enemies in the game? And the second part of this is actually... Um, the intellect, discipline, and strength recharge times broken down as well. Basically, different armor will give you like plus 50 discipline, which reduces your grenade cooldown, um, plus whatever intellect, which reduces your super cooldown. And there was somebody who did a really informative video of um, what 100% bonus in that one specific skill does to your cooldown. So basically, for example... If you have no intellect, discipline, or strength, whatever, if you have no modifiers, your super ability recharges every five and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. That's without killing anybody. That's without doing anything. Yeah. If you have 100% intellect, your super recharges in three minutes, 55 seconds. So it significantly reduces the time it takes to recharge, right? Mm-hmm. And also, if you have 100% intellect, you get twice as much super meter for earned kills. So oh, wow. you earn your super back twice Insanely as quickly. Insanely fast. Yeah, and if you have 100% discipline, uh, your grenade is on a 27-second cooldown as opposed to a full minute. So hmm. um, it's a really informative video that will be available in the show notes. That's cool. You know what it makes me think, too? There's going to be such a level of depth when it comes to how you want to customize your individual character in relation to your squad and team. Vault of Glass, we got to see it played. We get to talk about it a little bit today, which I'm excited. Looked really difficult, not impossible, but really challenging from all the video and footage that I've seen. Um, But the players had to work together very tightly. You know what I'm saying? Like in coordinated movement, in focus firing down X or Y and Z. And players had to use their classes in a really specific way. Like you saw each team had like a Sunsinger Warlock because it reduced the cooldown of everybody in the party. And when they popped that super, it was really important. Imagine like really strategizing and making your intellect a key priority for a Sunsinger Warlock class. And that is the, do you know about the the subclass Sunsinger? Uh, not too much. I do know that they have a self revive, which is basically yeah. essential in Vault of yeah. Glass. <laughs> yep. So it has a, a self revive, which is pretty cool. When you die, you can, if you have that up and it's not on cooldown, you get to revive yourself. But it reduces the cooldowns of all the abilities of your teammates around you. That includes supers 
and grenades. So when you activate it, your character gains a bunch of stat boosts. You also get like ridiculously fast recharge rates for your grenade. You drop motes or those little lights. What are they called? Orbs the, of light. Orbs of light. There we go. You drop those like a candy machine. <laughs> and it's really helpful and cool because you can be an asset to your teammate almost like a healer without being a healer. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're just basically the support mage of the game. And exactly. If you have 100% intellect, that's that means your super is up like every minute or so because you're killing enemies so much in the Vault of Glass. So that would really be the thing to focus on if you're a Sunsinger Warlock intellect, definitely. And it synergizes with your teammates because you improve their cooldowns. Exactly. They drop a super, you get more of the Orbs of Light, and it creates this really like cool synergy. I, I know in Strikes when I'm doing it, we start throwing supers if the teammates you know what they're doing. You can just start throwing so many supers and destroying bosses a lot quicker, and that's really cool. We don't even have the third subclass for every class in the game yet. I you don't know? think that there's three. Oh, there's a slot. There's, There's a, a slot, slot for it. But and we've talked about it like earlier in the show. I guarantee you, you're going to see a third subclass being added DLC. Like, later down the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't make me wait till Christmas. <laughs> I don't want to wait till December. Well, that is Weapon Stats in-depth. Um, Bungie put out a weekly update. I want to share some of it, not all of it. Uh, it's not really that detailed, uh, but a cool s- bit of stats and one Q&A question that I want to highlight. So 100 million hours were played. That's enough to watch the entirety of the Lord of the Rings trilogy almost 9 million times. And yes, they are talking about the special extended editions. 137 million activities played, the equivalent of 535,000 regular seasons of the NFL, which is ridiculous. Uh, the average gameplay session lasts about three hours on weekdays. On weekends, it looks like you have a little bit of extra time raising that average up to more than four hours per session. One billion players served in the Crucible, and that's player deaths, basically. And they're excited. They say this is just the beginning. They talk about the Vault of Glass. They interview Dotto and talk about Vault of Glass stuff. It's not impossible. People have beaten it, and that's cool. Blah, blah, blah. You can check it out online. Talk about some bounty stuff, crucible stuff, that kind of thing. But finally, the mail sack at the bottom. And KT Freakful Jesus asks, is the tower going to be opened up more? And the answer is yes, and soon hell hath no fury like a queen scorned. And that's their answer right there. And I don't think they're just talking about what we saw today with the queen's bounty. Do you? The queen's wrath? No. I mean, that area that opened up, Obviously, it's going to host the Iron Banner as well, but there are other areas in the tower that that look like doors waiting to be opened. Yes, you know, like yes. where this in the North Tower, the north part of the tower where the speaker is. There's a door yep. down there that I'm yep. like, I want to know what's behind that door. You can tell. You just look at it in the design. It was almost like the beta when we were looking at certain areas of the moon, going, "This door leads somewhere, but I don't know where yet." Exactly. I feel like we're going to keep seeing these things unlocked. It's underplayed. The fact that this is just a small little zone, but I think we're going to see more and more of this if I get to play Captain Speculation. So, D Money One Two Three Two One asks, "Did you intend for the PvP reward system to be the way it is?" And Bungie responds, "Yes." The questions you should be asking is, "Do we intend for the PvP reward system to work like this forever?" And the answer is, "Ask us again sometime." We are one week clear of the launch. What we can promise is that Destiny is never finished. So there's your inadvertent answer to saying they're working and changing things. Yeah, so people are unhappy that, you know, I can get a green loot from a legendary engram, but it is random, and that's the way Bungie intended it right now. So they're always taking this information into account, and as we can see patches happen so things can definitely change at a moment's notice i'm giving them my trust if this is well i don't know it's hard because you can feel like that girlfriend who's been scorned one too many times you and i gave (laughs) 343 our trust and didn't see much progress for almost six months but this is different because bungie has a history you you and i we've had two patches and a hot fix so far so i think we're good in two weeks which is pretty decent right yeah, that's that's really good. And uh, last thing I wanted to answer or read here is, now that the game is shipped, are you guys having discussions about weapon balancing for the Crucible? And that's from RDN. And the answer is, every day, some of what we discuss comes from our own games. We also pay attention to the feedback form if you have, you know, feedback. So they're paying attention. I'm sure we'll see changes down the road. You can't get a mail sack that says... 
the loot system's broken, fix your game. And they're like, okay, yeah, you're right, it's broken, we're going to fix the game. They have to voice it in a strategic way, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, every news, well, I say quote, I'm air quoting right now with news, every game news site on the web is going to be like, Bungie admits defeat! They tell Activision (laughs) to take their money back because they just couldn't responsibly handle it, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Gotta be so careful with your PR these days. That's the end of our news today. Oh, wait, no, one more news. That title oh. is copyrighted, by the way. So if any news yeah. sources are listening, you have to pay us money to use that title. Thank you. Yep, done. Thank you. <laughs> um, one of our friends of the show, Assassinator, was on a squad of people running Vault of Glass on the Xbox 360. I have the YouTube link for the run uh, in the show notes, and it is a Vault of Glass completion in 39 minutes and 59 seconds. They were going for the world record, and as it stands now, it is believed to be the world record speed for Vault of Glass. So... If that holds up and it remains the top time throughout the week, I'll try and get a quick three or four minute interview with Assassinator for our listeners next week regarding going for the world record on Vault of Glass. I'm pretty sure him and his team are committed to breaking the record if it gets broken again. Now, Diddy, I played a lot of Loot Cave this week. For viewers who don't know, that is an earth spot where you can farm a lot of engrams pretty quickly and easily. Now, you have a story about the loot cave from a Reddit user that you wanted to read for us. Absolutely. This is The Firing Squad by Volk00. Today, while indulging in the ritual of the Cave of Treasures in that most ancient part of old Russia known as Skywatch, with several fine compatriots of mine, there happened upon us a fresh young knave, barely level 8 was he, He crept rather cautiously across the snowy rock and dried grass to the place where we stood all in a line, ominous and foreboding, like a firing squad readying our rifles for a well-rehearsed execution, and eventually came to sit himself upon the nearby rock. Quite bewildered, he watched as we continued our methodical and surgical practice until such a time when, finding no answers within his own inexperienced mind, he thought to pose a question to us. "'Why do you shoot at this cave?' he queried. "'Has it paid you some great insult? "'Surely it is but a damp hole in the ground, "'unremarkable as any other. "'Pray then, what wrong has it done "'to deserve such a harsh and dutifully exacted vengeance?' "'All at once we were taken quite aback, "'as puzzled at his question as he was with our work. "'Then with a quick glance to one another, "'we laughed in unison, "'knowingly and admittedly patronizing laugh.' Do not question it, I beseeched him. Simply join us if you are curious. He seemed troubled by this for a moment, like a frightened animal, uncertain of the intentions of the one who would offer it a meal so freely and without expectation of repayment. At last, he stood as cautiously as he had crept to this place and joined us in our line, the shortest and least impressive among us, but undoubtedly the boldest. As we opened fire once more, I was sure that each one among us was still smiling beneath his mask, that nostalgic and intoxicated grin soaked with memories of the days when we were so naive that this young spot, that this young squire would happen upon us. Together, we knew that one day he too would stand where we stood long after our bones had been scattered across the many worlds we'd sworn to protect, and at this time he might also fondly think of his earlier days. He would joyfully reminisce about the days before he knew the pains of unjustly receiving a blue object from a legendary purple engram, and before he was gifted his hate for the one they curse in the blackest and foulest tongues of the land, from the highest spires of the gilded tower to the lowest and darkest pits of the last city below. That foul trickster, that hooded demon, Cryptark, they would hiss, and his very fibers shook with all the terrors of a thousand unrequited souls longing for exotics. For now, he knew not what it meant. For now, it seemed, ignorance was truly bliss. Your voice is, like, the most soothing thing ever. Can I pay you to, like, read books, please? I mean, I'm sure people have told you that as well. No, no, I was just sitting here, like letting the ears my ears be massaged by your words that is an awesome fan fiction can can you it's your goal now to find something like that every week or we need to contact that guy exactly. and get him to write a piece for us each week you know what we also need yes to compliment yeah. this 
what? a theater mode in Destiny to make machinima based off of these fan fictions. I mean, boom, segue right there. Yes, De- Bungie, please, please. The you can lower your weapon, but there can't be any enemies around, and it takes like minutes of waiting before the weapon lowers. Really? So, yeah. Dang. But we do need we do need a mode where machinima can be made because it is too pretty. You know what I'm saying? Like. When you play through the story missions again and you see your character in the cutscenes with your sweet gear, you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> scary sweet. Or when you play with other people in the Crucible and you're just like, I wonder what I look like when I'm Warlock blinking. Dude, I got Warlock blink this week. Oh my gosh. I got Hunter blink too. Dude, is blink not the coolest thing? Yeah, it's it was hard to use at first. I was so confused. because it's OP. It doesn't give you the height that Double Jump does, but no. like... Dude, it's weird, you know. Direction changes instantly. Like if there's an enemy firing something big at you, that Mars strike where the tank shoots the big bullet. Yes. Dude, you just jump and blink. It's like, oh, see ya. Oh, <laughs> it's so cool. Or like when I'm around low level players, I'm like, you want to see me do a magic trick? Oh, oh now I'm over here. <laughs> and then I just like wonder, oh, he's so confusing, so cool that guy. How does he blink through the air? It's so good in Crucible. Thank you for reading that, by the way. We really should get in contact with that gentleman because that's pretty awesome right there. <laughs> Absolutely. People who don't know what Loot Cave is, that probably just went over their head, but guys, just go Google Loot Cave and figure, figure it out. It's a good farming spot. Let's get on to our topic. This is your ghost, Miranda. And when I'm not out helping Guardians, I'm listening to Destiny the Show. So I wanted to ask you what your reception of the game is after two weeks of play. You and I have gotten a chance to play more. We gave our feedback last week. I just want to know where you stand right now. It's definitely more positive than last week. Um, I think last week we didn't fully understand the scope of the game. And we, um, I think a lot of people played this game for a week expecting to be fully geared out at the end of it. And they weren't. And they got mad because with the random generation of loot, it does somewhat seem unfair you know completing those high level strikes and those uh, other things and only getting blue loot and you expecting legendary stuff it's it does seem unfair but that's part of the grind and um you know if there are reworks in the works (laughs) then obviously any change will be welcome to improve our experience but i think that's just part of the grind you know if everybody was maxed out after the first week there wouldn't be any longevity to the game, so it's it's all about the journey. At the time of this recording, there's only one level 30 player, and that just happened, I think, two days ago. Did you see their tweet about it? No, I didn't see it. I, I can find you the link. Um, not right now, but it took a long time, and you can tell this guy's been playing quite a bit, but the first level 30, and I'm wondering if there's beyond level 30 available, if that armor exists in-game. And my... My guess is yes, because we're still finding new things out. That secret PvP playlist, it amazes me nobody has found that yet. Unless Dustiny, or excuse me, Bungie just sort of pushed that in, you know, kind of secretly. If they can start doing that kind of backdoor stuff. I mean, I'm sure they turned the moon on. If they didn't, like, didn't do all that PR and talk about it, you know they can turn things on and off from their end, which is so cool. It would be so fun to be on a raid or a strike or doing something in-game and to discover something brand new. And I feel like that feeling, I'm getting more and more as I play. Yeah, the Destiny universe, we've just stepped foot inside. And like the new discovery experience is still there in many aspects. Yeah, you know what's weird is I've been doing a lot of patrols. I've got vanguard marks out my ear right now because i did a lot of strikes but i can't spend it because i'm not vanguard rank two i'm almost vanguard rank two and once you do that you can start spending those on pieces of gear i have almost enough strange coins to buy something from well this next weekend i'm definitely going to buy an exotic from zur agent of the nine he only shows up on the weekends though i think friday through sunday yeah yeah i think yeah he's only a weekend dude i cannot wait some of those items just look insane is he the only way to get exotics or can you get that in drops you can get them you can get them uh i know there's exotic bounties i've watched uh dotto do some of that on his channel i want to be careful with what i say because i don't understand it enough and i'm sure there's listeners that do so i think my tentative answer is yes there are other ways to get them okay but it's rare because i don't think i want to buy my first exotic i want to earn it 
Really? You know, I'm kind of old school like that. You know, I don't care how long it takes. I kind of want to earn my first exotic. I will, because I'll buy it. I really want the Hawk Moon hand cannon. Yeah. But it's exotic, and I haven't found it yet. It looks so good, dude. I really, really want it. Like, once I get it, that's the only thing I'm ever going to use ever again. Yeah. I have a pretty good hand cannon right now. It has 11, 11 clips, uh, or 11 shots in the magazine. And oh, my gosh. It's really <laughs> good. It's it's a blue, too. It's not legendary. Mm-hmm. So it's... Uh, I want that's that pl- Hawk Moon, dude. You got to get it. You just buy it, dude. Don't even... Don't, don't torture yourself for too long. <laughs> My first exotic that I get is going to be like a warlock bond, and I'm going to be like, no. <laughs> I got five purples from Loot Cave over the weekend, purple engrams. Three greens, two blues, both of which were trash, so that was pretty sad. Wow. Oh, you you mean, okay, yeah, yeah. Engrams, not, not purple drop. <laughs> that would be the best if you got an actual purple drop. I think I need one more Cryptarch rank before I really start seeing what, some good what stuff. What Cryptarch so. rank are you right now? Can't remember. Oh, Sorry. I think I'm about to hit five. Yeah. Well, you got the good stuff coming then. I was playing patrols and just noticing different areas of the game I've never been bef- before, like on Venus or on Mars. On Earth, for goodness sakes, I was doing patrols last night, trying to get that Vanguard um, rank up. New areas I'd never seen, okay, in Earth. Or there was one patrol that brought me all the way back to the starting zone, the very starting zone of the first mission. And I just got this like oh, weird yeah. nostalgic feels of like, you know, I've done quite a bit, and I've been playing with this character for... I'm starting to get attached to the character, is what I'm saying. Like, I'm starting to really dig deeper into it. And although, yes, I'm doing the same tasks, I'm enjoying it still, and having a lot of fun. Like, doing level 24 strikes this week. Yeah, it's the same strike, but there's a heck of a lot more stuff. I'm having to play a lot smarter. No, the rewards are not quite there yet. I still think that the loot system, the way it is now, is not optimal. I think they need to really ditch that RNG element, not entirely, but give players a more attainable, clear way to see if I do X, Y, Z, I can earn that great reward. Does that make sense? Yes. That's been my tagline of everything in the show. Does that, does that make sense? One of these days, you'll just say no. Nothing of what you say makes sense. So after two weeks of play, man, I'm having a good time. It's basically all I'm playing. It's all I'm going to continue to probably play for the coming weeks. I, I do want to see more, but I'm happy. Does that make sense? It just I'm just happy with where it sits. Yeah. yeah that's, that's my two cents. That's... I'm interested in hearing what viewers think. If you guys want to tweet us, that's fine. You can let us know in the YouTube comments. If you're listening on iTunes like most of you are, tweeting is the best way to go. And then we can put you on the show from It Came From Twitter. So I was going to do this next section in Tower Talk, but it really it's too close to our topic not to just leave it in the topic. So... We had a listener on Twitter contact us, letting us know that he was a bit displeased with last week's show. I'm not going to share names because it doesn't matter, and I don't know if he wants that shared. Uh, Saying that we were pretty negative on last week's show regarding the game. Specifically saying that if we could be uh, be bored with the game prior to 40 hours, then why even bother hosting a podcast on the show? And I just want to address this up front. Although we give our critiques... Neither me or Diddy said we're bored with the game as of yet. I did say that if no new content comes in about two to three weeks, I will begin getting bored with some of the tasks. And I just sort of dispel that because we're two weeks in. Not really bored yet. I'm doing similar tasks. There's not a whole lot of new, but I'm enjoying it still. But this podcast, we're not going to back away from critique, man. We see the full potential, and we want to see the game reach full potential. And I don't think any player of destiny couldn't argue with the fact that there's untapped potential within the game give it more time it will grow into that but how much time is that kind of a question diddy do you want to address this um no i think you said pretty much everything there is to say yeah i mean you know no matter how critical the community can be bungie is always appreciative of the feedback you know um, they want to know how the community reacts to their product that they've worked so hard to produce and if the community is not happy with their product they're gonna they're not gonna say oh well screw you because you know we like the game doesn't matter what you think Uh, they're really gonna take into account what we have to say and really try and make the user experience better so any critique is good critique at this point unless it's you know the obvious troll you know exactly constructive Criticism is what we gave last week, what we didn't enjoy, and how we think 
it's going to be able to be fixed realistically, not like intense, this game sucks, I'm done. There's a lot of that on the internet, and I can understand it, but both me and Diddy are committed to Destiny in a long-term perspective. We've been doing this podcast for one week shy of three months now. We're committed to this game, and we want to see it reach that full level. So whenever we're giving critique, it's with the goal that we've got a lot of ears listening to us who can give us feedback, who can spread feedback, and Bungie pays attention to outlets like this. Believe it or not, they really do have a lot of ears to the ground. They pay attention to the consumer. If no one complained about the Interceptor tank, you wouldn't have seen a change. Were there a exactly. lot of people who just went, Interceptor sucks, Bungie's stupid. Yeah, but there were also people who said, hey, I think the Interceptor is too powerful. I'd like to see it scaled down a bit. That change was made based on direct feedback from players. So we always want to walk in this nice line of giving good feedback that is constructive, but not shying away from calling out things that we think should be called out and brought to light. Yeah, if they see the population diminish in, over the next few weeks, we'll know why. And it's because there's not enough content for us, and Bungie will quickly realize that and um, maybe push up some things. Well, I'm excited. I hope to hit. I'm level 24. You're level 24. Hopefully by next week we'll be level 25 or 26 and we can continue on with our adventures. So, Diddy, where can people find your content on the old YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, the whole nine? YouTube.com slash whooshness with three O's. That's W-O-O-O-S-H-N-E-S-A-S-S. Whoa, I almost misspelled my own channel. And the Twitter's the same, and then twitch.tv slash Diddy underscore. Haven't been able to stream recently because uh, tests coming up, but uh, I do plan on it. So expect cool. those eh, in the next month or so. Right on. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I know you pushed out some Destiny videos, so you're on that grind, man. It's begun. Absolutely. Let the landslide continue. Uh, nobody completed our bounty from last week, so it still stands. Send us a picture, tweet us a picture of your guardian inside the Vault of Glass to complete our bounty and enter the Wall of Fame. Right now, it's just Neffin, man. He's sitting atop that golden throne laughing at all the people who can't complete the bounty. Uh, anyway, iTunes gets the show first. YouTube gets it on Wednesdays. You can follow me at BBK Dragoon. Follow at Destiny the Show on Twitter. Email us, Destiny the Show at gmail.com. And if you want any of the links to today's um, stuff, check out destinytheshow.com. Thanks for listening. We're looking forward to next week. Have fun out there, Guardians, and we'll see you next time.